Hi everybody, welcome to video number 13. You might remember in the last video I showed you how to convert digital numbers into actual radiance values for a 224 band hyperspectral avarice image. And you may also recall that avarice image was of an oil spill after the Deepwater Horizon in the summer of 2010. Our ultimate goal with this image is going to be to classify the image into a number of classifications related to how thick the oil spill actually is and what the priorities for cleanup are of the different parts of the oil spill. So the first step was to convert to radiances. The next step towards classifying this image is going to be to actually collect some spectral signatures from different parts of the oil spill. So what we're going to do in this video, I'm going to do a brief review of the spectral signature of oil slicks. Then I'm going to show you how to use the pointer tool in ArcMap to get a sense for what the spectra are going to look like. Then I'll show you how to use the classification toolbar to actually extract spectra from areas of interest. And then talk a little about how to pick the best band ratios. So to start out, here's the spectral reflectance curve for oil slicks of different thicknesses. So we've got reflectance on the y-axis, we got wavelength on the x-axis. Notice that the thickest oil emulsion, 8 millimeters thick, shows up in yellow. And it has very high reflectance at a couple of these peaks, and then it has very low reflectance here. Likewise, the thinnest oil slick, 0.025 millimeters in blue, and it really doesn't have those big reflectance peaks. Okay? So ultimately, it's these reflectance peaks that we're going to actually want to exploit to actually try to make estimates of how thick the oil spill is and what its priority for cleanup should be. So let's go ahead to ArcMap and see how if we can do this. So I've got my blank project open. I'm going to add the file we made in the last video, which is all of the hyperspectral bands already converted to radiance. So these are not digital numbers, these are now radiance bands. Okay, can't see much. That's because it's showing red, green, and blue as the first three spectral bands. And those are going to be very similar to each other. So the first thing I'm going to do is reassign those. Okay, throughout this video, you may need to refer back to the hyperspectral band intervals for Avarice. So to help you with that, I've created a little cheat sheet. That's going to be under the Course folder. And under the Lab 3 folder, under useful info, I've got this spreadsheet called Avarice Bands and Gains. When you open that up, the first row is the band, second row is the gain, third row is going to be the actual center wavelength. So this is how I'm going to be able to tell. I'm going to want to assign blue to band 10 at 453 nanometers. I'm going to want to assign green to band 20 at 550. And I'm going to assign red to band 30 at about 650. So you may need to refer to that. So red is going to be band 30. Green is going to be band 20. Blue is going to be band 10. This is going to be, give me something close to a true color image. And then, of course, I'm going to give that a little stretch. I'll use percent clip. And I've got a pretty decent image here where the thickest oil spills are showing up in red and some of the other th dense strands are showing up in this lighter color here. Again, I think we're starting to see some of that better reflectance of the oil spill. So now to categorize this image, um, we want to develop some spectral criteria that we can use to categorize the image. So one way to just poke around and see what the different spectra look like is to use this identify tool here, this button. So I'll, first I'll zoom in on an area, maybe this area. And then I'm going to use the identify tool. I'm going to click on the brightest patch. And that shows me the, ref the, the radiance value for each of the wavelengths that I have displayed. So I can see it's reflecting highest in the blue, 
a little less in the green, a little less in the red. Okay, now if I click a different area, I'm going to see similar values but slightly different. But in the end, all these pixels have fairly similar reflectance values in the visible wavelengths that I've displayed. So I need to extract more information. I need to extract information about all 224 hyperspectral bands. So now to do that, we're going to use the classification toolbar. That's probably not showing up on your screen yet, so you'll want to right click up in this area, go down and find image classification right here. Mine's already turned on. If yours isn't, then check it to turn it on. And you should see this toolbar here appearing on your screen. What this is going to allow me to do is actually extract the average radiance for each band from within a given set of pixels that I'm going to define with a polygon. So the first thing we're going to do is try to identify areas of the image that we think represent thick oil, medium oil, or thin oil. And then I'm going to draw polygons around each of those. So let me start by drawing one around the thick oil. Down in this part of the image, this white color is actually the deep water horizon itself. And I'm going to guess that this red color represents the thickest oil. So I'm going to draw one polygon around this part, gather those pixel for inclusion in my mean. And then I'm going to draw around this part also. And just keep in mind that the results you get depend entirely on which pixels you decide to include. So the polygons from both of these, excuse me, the pixels from both of these polygons will end up being part of our thick oil example. So now let's draw a couple that will fall under the medium category. And to do that, I'm going to go over to this blue area where it looks like there's kind of a medium thickness of oil. And I'm going to draw a polygon around this image. And then this looks kind of medium over here. I'll collect these pixels as well. And finally, I'm going to gather a couple polygons to reflect low or thin oil. I like to look at this dark blue pixel area here. And then maybe I'll also pick this dark blue area down here. OK, so I've drawn six training polygons now. Two for each category. And now I'm going to click Training Sample Manager. And this is showing me the six polygons that I've drawn. They're color coded so you can match up which is which. But just from memory, I know these first two were intended to be thick oil. I'm going to highlight them both, and then I'm going to hit Merge. Then I'm going to highlight the two I intended for medium thickness, and I'm going to merge those. And finally, I'm going to merge the two I intended for thin oil thickness. And then I'm going to rename them thick, medium, and thin. OK. And you can see over here, this count column shows the number of pixels that are going to be averaged for each of these categories. Now, what's cool about this is you can actually visualize some of the statistics using these buttons. But instead of doing that, I'm going to output the data directly to Excel. I'm going to, and I'm going to do that by making sure all three are selected. Then I'm going to click this button over here, Create a Signature File. That's going to prompt me to save the file, which I'm going to do, I guess, just save it on my desktop. And it's going to save it as a GSG file for signature. So that's going to save out. Now, that is actually saved as an ASCII text file. So to look at it, I'm going to go to my desktop where I saved it. Here it is. And I'm going to change the extension from GSG to .txt. Keep in mind, ARC may no longer be able to recognize it if you put the text extension on it. But the nice part about having the text extension on it 
is that I'm then going to be able to open it with uh, a text editor. And what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to open it from Excel, Microsoft Excel. And I'm going to go to Open, Desktop, find the file. Now, as I'm importing it, I, I need to make some choices. I'm going to choose the file is delimited. Then I'm going to hit Next. And I think the delimiters are going to be Tab and Space. So I'll choose those and I'll hit Finish. This is the actual file. It's got a bunch of information. I won't go over it all. It's showing me all the bands up top. But here's where things get interesting. Here it's showing me, for the first class, the mean radiance value for all the layers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here's the mean values. Notice these two rows are a little bit offset from each other, not the end of the world. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm actually going to copy this data into a new Excel project. And I'm going to paste it in. And I'm going to call it band, or I'm going to, just remembering, I'm going to call it thick. Then I'm going to continue down and copy the means for the second class. Paste those in, call those medium. And finally, go ahead and grab the means for the third thin class. Once I've got that copied, I can close the file, paste those out, and that's going to be for the thin class. So those are the radiance values for each band. Now I'm going to go back to the cheat sheet that I gave you. Remember that was called Avarice Bands Gains. And I had all the wavelengths here for every band already prepared for you. I'm just going to copy that. And then I'm going to paste it in up top. So now what you can see is that for your, th you can see which spectral wavelength corresponds to which band and what the radiance was in that band. Okay. So the next step is going to be make a plot of this. To do that, I'm going to highlight this. Then I'm going to hold Control, highlight that data set as well. I'm going to go Insert, Scatter, and choose this plot option. And that's going to plot the data for me. Um, I don't like, first of all, um, it's hard to see the differences because we have such a range of data. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on a log scale. I'm going to click once to highlight the box on this axis, then right click, format axis. I'm going to choose logarithmic scale, and then I'm going to tell the x axis to cross at 0 0.01. Okay? So that's going to give me this nice logarithmic display. I can see the differences better. I don't like the data the way the data points are displayed. So I'm going to click once on the data. Then I'm going to right click, Format Data Series, Marker Options, choose None, Line Color, Solid Line, Line Style, down to 1. Finally, I don't like these bars. I well, guess I won't worry about those. OK, so what this shows is the spectral radiance curve for thick. Now keep in mind, this actually isn't a reflectance curve. It's actually the radiance. That's why it's falling away so exponentially like this. As we move away from the visible spectrum, the reflected light is falling off, just like the black body curve predicts that it should. So to get the other two plots on here, I'm going to go back to Select Data. And that's going to be, so first I'll click on the chart, highlight the chart. And I'm going to go up here under Chart Tools, under Design. 
then select data and I'm going to add a new data set. I'm going to call it medium. Then I'm going to hit this button. That's going to let me go out and select the actual data that I want to add. I'm going to select the entire row here. Oh, excuse me. I'm actually going to select this entire row for my x values. Takes a while with 224 bands, but there it is. Now to cheat and avoid having to do that again, I'm going to just copy that, paste it in here, and then just change the row value from 3 to 6, noting that my values for medium are in row 6. Now I'm going to add one more. This is going to be for thin. Again, I'm going to cheat and just paste the values paste them again here, but change the row to 7. Hit OK. OK, great. So now I've got my data set here. And what I can see is that there are some pretty important spectral differences between the thick, medium, and thin oil slicks. The thick slick has a really high reflectance at some of the peaks we looked at earlier. And the thin and medium are a little bit closer, but, but they are showing up the way they should. So the good news here is that these spectra are going to be a reliable way to distinguish thick, medium versus thin oil slicks. So the next thing to do is going to be to choose some band ratios where we think the band ratios will correspond to the thick, medium, and thin oil slicks. So to do that, and to be perfectly explicit, I want to label my axes first. This, of course, is wavelength in nanometers. And this, of course, is radiance. The other thing I'm going to do is right click here to format this axis. I'm going to put minor tick marks in at 100. And I'm going to show the tick marks inside the box. That way I can actually start to see where I am. I'm going to pick the ratio of, of wavelength 1254 over 1343. So I'll keep track of these as I go along. So ratio 1 is going to be 1254 over 1343. Ratio 2, I think I'm going to pick the high point here. Call it 1602 over this kind of point where they're all very similar. Call it 1791. And then a third ratio that I think I might be able to use, why don't I actually go back up here and uh, pick this one, which would be 1044 over 1111. So here I've got three possible ratios that I might be able to use to distinguish the thickness of oil. Now I need to figure out what band these wavelengths correspond to. So luckily I've got my cheat sheet copied up here. So I'm just going to go find 1254 nanometers, OK? And I'm going to drive out along this row. 1254, that corresponds to band 97. So I'll put that in here. OK, so I took the liberty of filling in the last few bands that correspond to our wavelengths. So what I'd urge you to do now, go ahead and make these three ratio images, get them loaded into ArcMap, 
And then when the next video starts, I'll show you how to actually classify the image based on these ratios. And just to remind you, in this video, we've covered a review of the spectral signature of oil slicks, how to use the pointer tool, how to use the classification tool, and how to pick the best band ratios to classify the thickness of an oil slick. Join us for our next video, number 14, how to use conditional statements in raster calculator to actually classify an image. Thanks for listening.